Have you ever wondered why some players seem to make smarter decisions during the game? Are you looking to understand the essence of effective finishing action drills and how they can significantly impact your team's performance? Welcome to APFC Positional Soccer. Today, we're diving deep into soccer training, focusing on finishing action drills. We will explore how you can optimize your training sessions to mirror real game situations and improve your players' decision making. Stay tuned as we uncover three transformative, practical, and impactful drills you can integrate into your training sessions immediately. In the contemporary coaching landscape, a common sight is that coaches emphasize execution-based finishing actions, devoid of context and poorly transferred from real competition scenarios to training sessions. These issues primarily stem from the player's actions, the focal points of corrections, and the environment coaches design for these drills. At APFC, we've developed three solutions to address these concerns effectively. Typically, training sessions predominantly feature shoots on target or crosses. However, this approach overlooks the essential actions leading to these final situations. It is imperative for players to master receptions between the lines or in spaces where they can face the back line directly. Once in these positions, players encounter critical decisions, whether to pass or dribble for the possessor and for the attackers, how to penetrate the back line. These situations frequently arise in games after beating pressure or during counter-attacks. The anticipation of scoring often leads players to hasten their decisions, resulting in mistakes in player interaction. Our training sessions aim to enhance player interaction to reach the desired shot on target effectively. To enhance players' ability to overcome the back line, we identify two crucial references for them. For the possessor, the decision to pass or dribble is informed by the positioning and movement of the back line. If the back line is stopped with space behind, the option must be to pass the ball to the space. The space and the opposing team will inform us where the opportunity arises. If the back line is dropping back or near the goal, without space in behind, our players must dribble through the gap to attract the defender's attention and provide space for the attackers. For the attackers, the focus is on two reference points. The defender's blind spot in horizontal or vertical alignment. The choice of attack space is contingent on the defender's focus whether on the ball or the player. Identifying optimal positions facilitates better control, easing the execution. A common mistake for coaches is an excessive focus on the final execution, overlooking the significance of the preceding action. Enhancing players' movements enables better control of action tempo and rhythm, creating more favorable scoring situations. The pivotal question is how to incorporate these insights into our training sessions effectively. We start by recognizing the most frequent situation, the player's reception in a space, to confront the back line and decide whether to pass or dribble. Subsequently, attackers must discern the defender's behavior to modify their movement to attack the goal. Let's delve into the details of each drill. Before we dive into the detailed drills, if you're finding this content valuable, please take a moment to hit the like button and share this video with other coaches or anyone interested in enhancing their soccer knowledge. It helps us reach more people and share our insights on positional play. In our first drill, we initiate an SSP that consists of three distinct actions designed to hone specific skills and interactions between players. The first action is isolated, focusing intensely on the interaction between the possessor and the attacker. Here, the emphasis is on improving communication and understanding between the two, particularly on whether the attacker intends to exploit the defender's horizontal or vertical blind spot. Following this isolated action, the red team starts a 2 versus 1 situation. The player initially passing the ball rounds a cone to enter and defend, creating a dynamic 2 versus 2 situation. This transition adds extra pressure on the attackers to conclude the action swiftly and mimics real game situations where players must adapt to changing scenarios. This drill's third and final action evolves into a 3 versus 2 situation. To enhance the effectiveness of this scenario, we incorporate two rules. A time constraint of 10 seconds for the offensive team to finish the action, and a reward system where a goal scored by the defensive team after recovering the ball counts as 2. The second drill is another SSP but with two actions. The first action simulates the reception of a player between the lines. After this reception, the possessor and the off-ball player must synchronize their movements and interactions to exploit the space left by the defender, either behind or horizontally. 
The second action sees the two red players starting from the bottom in a 3 versus 2 situation, forcing the attackers to find an attacking option quickly. This drill also emphasizes quick decision making and effective space utilization by applying a time restriction and rewarding the defenders if they intercept and score. Attacking waves aren't just a powerful drill for youth ages, they're effective at the highest levels of competition too. Observe how Luis Cortez implemented it just a day before a Champions League final. Excellence in practice translates to excellence in performance. Posteriormente pasamos a unas oleadas, oleadas de 2 contra 1. Es una tarea que ya sea en este formato de 2 contra 1 o en formato de de 2 contra 1, 3 contra 2 o 1 contra 0, 1 contra 1, 2 contra 1. Es una tarea que siempre hacíamos en la sesión menos 1, pero esta de 2 contra 1 sucesivos eh, era una tarea sencilla, donde las jugadoras no tenían que, que pensar demasiado, donde había muchos goles, ¿vale? acciones de 2 contra 1, de fijar, pasar y finalizar, a priori tenía que haber muchos goles, y era una tarea que nos servía mucho para, para eso, para que las jugadoras acabaran el entreno con, con muchos goles, habiendo acertado mucho, habiendo tenido muchas acciones positivas, y que por lo tanto ayudara a tener esas buenas sensaciones para acabar el, el entreno. The third drill is a more complex SSP segmented into three spaces each designed with a numerical advantage. This setup aims to stimulate and facilitate receptions between the lines. Once a player receives the ball in this space, they have two options. Pass to find a free player running in behind or dribble to create a new numerical advantage. This drills changing environment and multiple spaces force the players to continuously adjust their actions, making it the most intricate and challenging of the three drills. It requires players to be constantly aware and adapt their movements and decisions to evolving scenarios, mirroring the unpredictability and dynamism of real game situations. In conclusion, we can optimize player interaction and decision making by focusing on the preceding actions and the context, creating more favorable scoring situations. These detailed and context-rich drills are meticulously designed to address the prevalent challenges in finishing action drills. They offer a comprehensive solution for coaches seeking to refine their training methodologies and enhance player understanding and performance. We at APFC are dedicated to bridging the gap between training and real competition, providing a more holistic approach to soccer training. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss out on our valuable content. Drop a like, share with your fellow coaches, and let us know in the comments which drill you found most effective. Thank you for watching and let's continue to elevate the beautiful game together.